Hey everyone, my name is Captain Jack and welcome back to the channel. As you can probably tell by the video title and of course the thumbnail, we've got another lightsaber to unbox. Yeah, another one. Okay, so the story behind this, obviously it's been May 4th because we're in the month of May. Actually, by the time this uploads, it'll be June. Anyway, um, we was in the month of May, May the 4th came around, and if you're a Star Wars fan, you know, May the 4th be with you. It's kind of like a Star Wars celebration day. Uh, I wanted another lightsaber, and Ultra Sabers were having another sale. Now, many of you asked me in my last lightsaber unboxing video, which is from Saber Forge, say, Jack, which I order from, Saber Forge or Ultra Sabers? Now, I didn't order from Saber Forge, so I couldn't really give you a good comparison of which was the best to order from. Well, for May 4th, I thought I'd save a bit of money using the, you know, the daily discounts and also order from Ultra Sabers to see what their sabers are like, so I can also give you a bit of a video breakdown on how they're doing. I'm actually in the middle of collecting a few sabers at the minute. I really want to shoot some videos of actually doing some combat stuff with it soon, uh, obviously when lockdown's over. I mean, I guess with lightsabers, you can stay about two feet apart from someone. It's not the same effect, though, because you can't really get up close. So when that's over, probably, you know, end of August, we might be able to form some of that stuff, film some of that stuff and get on with it. Anyway, um, in the May 4th sales, I really wanted a Staff Saber, uh, or basically a double-bladed saber, typically what Darth Maul would wield, Savage Press, you see many of them throughout Star Wars, Satil Shan for an example. Um, I really wanted one of those sabers to see what it'd be like to order it, so uh, I ordered one. Pretty basic, doesn't have any sound, and uh, I'm going to unbox it right now and show it to you. Now, of course, you remember from the last video, from the last video, I actually have this one, which is my Saber Forge one, and uh, yeah, this one I kind of spent a bit of money on, basically to get it. There you go, to get it detailed, and as you can see here, it's obviously got all the detailing on it, and obviously that hilt as well, which I really like, and obviously the blade is a bit more um, durability, uh, a bit more, that's not a word. You get a point, it can withstand a bit more, because this is one I wanted on display, because it kind of looks pretty cool, I think you'll agree. Uh, it's kind of Sith as well, because I like Sith, I'm not, I'm not a Jedi. Anyway, I'm going to start unboxing this saber here, and like I say, it's a staff saber, so it's pretty unique. Now I will say one thing, Ultra Sabers and Saber Forge package these things really well. And I mean this, I don't know where it's shipped from, uh, I'm trying to show you the address second. I think it was Texas actually, yeah I'm trying to look at it, I think it was shipped from Texas. Anyway, um, it obviously comes really packaged really well, and obviously this, we've got a little bag inside here, I just wiped myself on the face of that. Um, this has got the one Saber plug in it, and also the bit you can attach them with, because you'll see why this is unique in a minute. The Allen key and stuff we'll probably lose, but also need later. Uh, I'm not showing you the address, so it's good, I'm not leaking the address just yet. Right, let's find this out here. Um, I had to cut it open already, so let's see. We've got one saber already, as you can see here. So the blades already come attached, which is good, because it means I didn't have to attach them. Can this box go here? So there's a little hole in my wall behind me. Right, so this is the first of the sabers, and it's pretty straightforward. The design on it is like super simple, so you can see it here. I didn't go, I'll flip it this way because I'm hit the wall. I didn't go for like a big intricate design this time, because I wanted something super basic, but it's basically made to be a stunt saber in a way, as you can see here. The idea of a stunt saber is you can whack it around and basically damage it if need be and you're not wasting a ton of money. So that saber I had a minute ago, the red one, uh, I wouldn't really want to break that in combat because I quite like the look of it and I spent a bit of money on this one. This one was around about, oh, I think just $114 and then the shipping on top was about $40. And then customs, which I just got charged today, was about $33. So yeah, it's a bit expensive. Um, I'll put a price breakdown in the description so you can know which one I got and a link to where you can get it yourself. But yeah, it was a little bit expensive. But oh, May 4th sales as well. Old Sabers are running some good deals on there. And I do like the lightsaber customization thing they're doing as well. So check out the website. I'll leave it down below. Anyway, let's turn it on. So it lights up blue, it's kind of it. It's no sound or anything like that, so it's pretty simple. And yeah, it's kind of really nice. So it's actually longer than the other one. I'll get the other one a sec. So for comparison, um, they are longer, well, this one's longer than the other one. The hilt size are roughly the same. You can see there, if I back up slightly. There you go. It is roughly the same in terms of hilt size. If I put them there, my one's slightly longer. However, the blade length on the red one is shorter. That's because the red one is around about 24 inches, and this one is around about 26 inches, I believe. Now, the reason I went for 26 inches for the blue one here, which I'm holding, is because this is a staff saber, so it's going to be longer. What I didn't think was when you put two together, it's obviously going to be even longer. So I can't actually swing this around in my house at the minute uh, without hitting the ceiling or the floor, which I'll show you in a bit. But it is quite funny either way. So uh, yeah, anyway, let me see about getting the other one out, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we have this one. Let's put that here a minute. Hopefully it doesn't roll off my desk or break anything. Now, we've got a box over here. Let's not show you the address. And we should be able to have another one in here. And so the idea is, I won't talk over unpackaging it. Right, here's another one. That's going to hit the ceiling. Right, box, go away. That's, yeah, anyway. So it's an identical saber. There's nothing unique about these ones. They're both identical because they're going to fill, um, form a staff saber, essentially. 
So I didn't want two different ended ones. Now you probably could have detailed these a lot better on Ultra Saber's website, but again, I just wanted something super basic that could fulfill what I wanted to do for filming. If I wanted like a big intricate design, I probably could have gone for that. But at the end of the day, this thing is just pretty simple. So essentially I now have two sabers. If I bring this one around about hitting myself in the leg, and they're both like this. This actually makes a really good thumbnail, me looking like this. You know, just, I was going to lick the blade then, it wouldn't have been a good idea. But hey, it looks really well and I like it. So you've got two of them. Now obviously what you're thinking is yes, if I don't put this in the window, these can form together like that. Kind of looks dodgy now I'm looking like that. But you get a point. I'll show you how these form together in a minute. And it forms basically a staff saber like Darth Maul, Satil Sham, and many other Jedi slash Sith or Grey Jedi would wield. And if a Grey Jedi wields staff saber, you get the point. And yeah, anyway, I'm going to show you how it goes together. But I'm really impressed with these. These came out really well. Um, and they're pretty simple. There's no sound included in these. Again, these are just stunt sabers. Didn't really need the sound in it. My red one obviously has a sound because I spent more money on it. Again, you can have sound in these if you want to spend more money on it. But it also takes longer to actually get it out to you. I was quite impressed with the time this actually got out to me. Bear in mind, I ordered on May 4th. It is May 29th as of filming this today. And it arrived yesterday, May 28th. That's not a bad delivery window, considering I waited about five months on my Saber Forge one. But bear in mind, with the Saber Forge one, that obviously came with um, sound and also a leather design, etc. So the more you work you want on your custom Saber, the more it is going to take time. Now, of course, I know one of the questions you're going to ask me is, Jack, is it worth me getting a lightsaber from Galaxy's Edge over in LA or Florida? Um, or should I get one from Ultra Sabers, Saber Forge, etc.? To be honest with you, uh, I can't really answer that question definitively for you at the minute, as I have not bought a saber from Galaxy's Edge. However, I probably will do when I go back next year. I was due to go back this year, but as you know, trips are a bit cancelled at the minute. Um, so hopefully I can tell you that at some point. But at the minute, I'm really impressed with Saber Forge's quality, but also I'm impressed with Ultra Saber's delivery time and also just customer care in general. And I'll speak more about that towards the end of this video. You want to see me form these sabers together. So to form these together, we actually need to take off the ends of the sabers. They're pretty simple. You just sort of unscrew them here. And like that. I'm going to drop this in a second. There we go. So one off there. And then we need to take the other one off. Let's put it there. And the hilt or the blade can actually come off these as well. So you can take the blade off. It's just a simple sort of Allen key retention thing. You just unscrew the blade and you can put a blade plug in. So also you can have it as a standard saber, you know, without the blade if you want to. But um, that's up to you. Right, we need from our magic box of tricks over here, we need the other screwing part. So for context, this is a blade plug. This just goes in one end if we need it. But again, I don't really use it because I like them displayed like this. Probably when I actually get a stand at some point, which I think I'm going to order on Etsy, um, just in like a custom shop when I find one, I'll get a stand for these sabers and put them on my shelf somewhere. Or maybe on the wall, I'm not sure. On the wall could be quite cool. Sort of like a Jedi thing. Okay, so we've got our jaw thing here, so you can see that. Kind of like two bits on the end there. It's basically the end, but with a bit of a screw bit on there. It's kind of quite cool. I like it. Anyway, we're going to put this in here, screw it in, and you just basically lock this in really nicely, so it's tight like that. It's not too hard. Now, the difficult part is you kind of have to do this without smashing up half your room, Jack, is you have to form these together, and I will say it is a bit of a pain to do, and doing this on a surface is probably better. But you can see you just screw this in, and yeah, it literally goes in like this. And ta-da, there we go. Pretty simple. Now, the thing is quite tall. Um, for context, I'm about 5'5", five 5'6", foot five, five foot and this thing is way taller than me. It's about 6 foot, I think, roughly. Yeah, probably higher than that, together. But I, I can't really show this to you, but um, yeah. That's on the floor. Bear in mind, the camera's probably stood up to being about, well, just slightly two inches higher than me at the minute. And this thing is still taller than that. So it's, it's a bit mental, to be honest with you. Um, you can't really swing it around indoors. If I could go outside without looking like a prat and swing it around, I would. But uh, I've not really got a place to film with that at the minute. It could be quite cool, though. So this is basically the saber. If I can fit this in the room. I'm filming in a corner, bear in mind. So if I do this, hopefully nobody at the window is going to look at me like, what's he doing? So, I don't know, can I bring it back here? How about a diagonal? Now you can see what I mean. And you can turn on both ends. I can't fit this in the lens, can I? Why don't we just zoom out a second? Uh, I've unfocused myself. There we go. Now you might be able to see. Cool. I'm really small on the side now, but you can see here. It's really cool. I like it. Um, yeah, again, no sound. You can also ignite one end and you just fit together like that. All it is, is a... I just hit the ceiling. All it is, just a simple screw. My neighbors are going to love me. Uh, anyway, you can see the point. I just did it again. Um, so yeah, this is it stood on the floor. It's still taller than me. It's quite cool though. Now the reason you're thinking, Jack, why did you get such a tall one? You know, if if you're not that tall and it doesn't really see you. Also, I keep unfocusing this camera. Ta-da! 
So the reason I got one, which was obviously bigger than me in a way, was because the idea is I'm going to get a couple of my friends who are actually like six foot um, to wield this while I wield my saber, which is obviously got a shorter blade, so it works better for my height and also weight in general. Um, the idea is they'll wield this one to be it should be like a staff saber slash dual saber like Darth Maul and you know others would use, which is kind of cool. So I like it, and uh, I think it works quite cool. If you're lucky, I might slot in a bit of a demonstration of me practicing this in the land because I've got more space in there. So we'll see about that in a minute. Okay, so as quickly promised, the audio is probably terrible in this clip, but this is a quick demonstration of how this saber works in its staff form. Bear in mind, I'm filming this inside. You should probably never do that, as uh, luckily in this room, in the flat, I kind of have tall ceilings, but uh, it's still very easy to hit this when it sort of spins, because this thing is about six foot, if not bigger. So yeah, it's you shouldn't do this, basically. But it's pretty simple just to spin. I'm gonna try not to hit stuff, so you can see me like, looking at various things. But it's pretty easy to spin and that's kind of how it looks. So you can imagine like Darth Maul or someone doing that. Now obviously I've still got to learn certain techniques to actually spin it properly. But you do it either way. I'm trying not to hit the ceiling as my neighbours are going to love me at this point. But you get the gist. It's kind of pretty easy to spin. Now obviously in a wider area you can start spinning in different ways behind you and around like that. Again, probably could do that outside. But sadly, uh, I don't think it's essential travel or exercise to take this outside and practice with your lightsaber. I mean, I guess you could do it for fitness or exercise, but uh, yeah. No, I don't really feel like doing that just yet. But hopefully that gives you a quick demonstration of how it actually works. Now, what you're obviously wondering is, Jack, should I order from Ultra Sabers or Saber Forge? Honestly, I can't really give you a yes or no answer to that. You kind of have to make up your mind on your own thing. I will say Saber Forge's shipping took ages and then slapping of a custom charge was also a bit of a kick in the teeth. The price as well. Uh, Ultra Sabers have impressed me with how fast they got it out, but it's not really a good comparison. Because bear in mind, this is a pretty basic Saber. They didn't have to make any changes to this. Hair like came in blue as the default thing. So that's, you know, how it formed. You know, I could have gone for more custom sort of design on the hilt. Um, rather than just sort of stainless steel metal, because this is metal. Um, however, obviously that would have taken longer, and it's not really something I wanted from the stunt saber in a way. If you want a couple of sabers just to smash around with your mates and have some fun, and maybe add in the sounds and like some video editing, or make them yourself, I know there's some about you who will do that, then probably Ultra Saber is the best one for you. If you want a more carefully designed saber with some intricate details and various things like that, I think Saber Forge would be the ones for you. Saber Forge seem higher quality overall when it comes to like, you know, high detailed designs. However, Ultra Sabers are quite quick and reliable for your stunt sabers. That's kind of my basic opinion. There are plenty of other YouTube creators out there right now um, who have made sort of lightsaber videos. One of my favorite creators at the minute is Star Wars IRL. Um, I forgot his own name, but he's called Star Wars IRL on YouTube. Go check out his channel because he does a, quite a few good breakdowns of lightsabers. Again, if you're in the US, you're going to get this faster. If you're in the UK like myself, probably not. But anyway, I really like the way this has been designed and, you know, comes in because, I don't know, having a dual saber is quite cool. Because also I can split this apart and then have double sabers, which is even better. Uh, that's obviously like a size Ventress and a few other Jedi who use, I mean, Soka used dual sabers as well. She had like a shorter one. But you get a point. It's, uh, it's quite cool. So my saber collection is growing. I really want to know from you guys what I should get next. Also, this is stuck on the desk now. There we go. For better comparison as well, as you may be wondering, this is what it looks like in its dual blade mode. So these are split apart now. And again, they kind of just go like to that. I've just unscrewed it temporarily. And they've got a bat. So you can imagine sort of fighting a bit like that in various forms. I almost hit myself in the head then. But you kind of get the gist. It comes up pretty well. So if you were dueling, you could probably manage two of these. I don't think I personally could manage two of these myself, but it sort of works nicely. And yeah, I, I mean, you go like a single set mode guy myself. I don't know. Maybe if there were shorter blades, I think I might manage it. Because these are quite long, like that. Like you can't really see them in the full frame anymore. You sort of can. I, I don't know. I guess you could do it. It depends which way you personally suit it, I think. Anyway, that's how they look. So I did touch on in this video as well, should you order from Galaxy's Edge or you know, go there and buy a saber? To be honest, if you just want a custom saber to play with, uh, well not a custom saber, a basic saber to play with, Galaxy's Edge is pretty cool. I did have a look in the lightsaber building thing when I was there in LA around about this time last year. It was very fun to look at, uh, a bit expensive though. It was like, I think it was 250 or something like that. It was 150? I don't know, it was quite quite expensive on the day. Uh, and I already like paid 100 quid to get into Disneyland, so it was quite expensive to go there. That's one thing with Galaxy's Edge. But I'll probably do a detailed video on that at some point. Either way, I think if you're just at home, haven't got the time to travel to Galaxy's Edge, or not really interested in going there, obviously at the minute you definitely can't go there, um, Ultra Sabers or Saber Forge are the ones for you. I did also come across another Saber thing on Instagram. If I find the page, I'll link it down below in the description. They did look pretty good, but entirely it's up to you on you know what you think might be best. Personally for me, I'm happy with my Saber Forge one, which is this one here. It kind of came out. It kind of came out really cool, and uh, I like the sound. Saber Forge, gun metal. That wasn't what I meant to press. I meant to hold it down. There we go. Now it works. This kind of makes a good thumbnail in a way, doesn't it? In a way. 
That would make a really good thumbnail. I like that. So yeah, Saber Forge, Ultra Sabers. Which is better? Honestly, I can't really give you a definitive answer. Like I said, it's up to you. Uh, and hopefully you can decide in the comment sections below. Ta-da! There we go. But yeah, you can make up your mind. I'll post some pictures of these maybe on Twitter or via my Discord server. All the links are down below and you can, of course, go and download there. That wraps me up on this video. If you did like it, make sure to leave a comment down below and also a like rating. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I don't make these videos often. However, I'm a very big Star Wars and sci-fi fan in general. So I look forward to seeing some more of these soon. I might be working on a Star Wars project soon where these things will come in handy. So uh, keep your eyes out for that. It's going to be pretty cool. If you also collect lightsabers and various things like that, please do let me know and get in touch. I'd love to chat with you about it. I'm available by Discord, Twitter, or Instagram and Facebook. Follow the pages down below and uh, I can't wait to see more. Hopefully when lockdown's over and this really nice weather, you know, is still around, I can actually go outside and film this. But until then, we will have to see.